Evidence-based practice, I think, has three distinctive features from the way we normally use evidence. And again, you'd be interested to know if you've ever seen this in the organisations you work with. So the first, first thing is a general approach. And the general approach is what people describe as conscientious, explicit, judicious. So conscious means you really try to gather evidence. Obviously, judicious means you judge the quality. And explicit means you write it down, you codify it, you share it with other people. The first difference is this general approach. The second difference is using multiple sources of data. And again, I, this is something I don't see very often. So people might say, use a lot of analytics in the organization, or they may find some scientific articles, but they don't often put those together and look at other sources of evidence as well. So using multiple sources of evidence is the second difference, I think. The third difference, I think, is it's taking a structured and stepped approach. <coughs> in general, it seems to me people don't like being guided about how to make decisions. So if you give people structures and guidelines, people just want to make decisions in their own way, which I get, and I, and I do as well. But it seems to me if you're in an organisation, if you're spending money, if you're dealing with important problems, then you should try and follow a more systematic approach rather than just going on hunches and so on. So there are the three differences. is general approach. It is, as it is using multiple sources of evidence and it's taking a structured approach. So, for example, if there's, if there's an issue around like, some mental health problems, you would start asking questions. Well, what do we really know from our expertise as practitioners is going on? And ask a series of questions. Then you might ask questions about uh, organisational data. If we've got any data in the organisation that tells about some mental health problem, what might be causing it? Then we might talk to stakeholders. What do unions or senior managers or employees or even employees' families think about this particular issue, problem, if there is one? And then also we look at the scientific evidence. Now, what is known in the scientific evidence about the cause of this issue or how we can understand it? So the first bit would just be really trying to say what is going on, what is the problem or issue, how big is it, how small is it, where is it, what do different stakeholders think, what do we think as, as expertise? And you'd always ask the question, how relevant and how trustworthy is the information you've got? Paying mu much more attention to the more trustworthy evidence and kind of ignoring more or less the less trustworthy stuff. And you do that for the problem. And then if you thought there was one or two, whatever it was, then you do exactly the same thing for solution. Multiple sources of evidence, go through a series of steps. So essentially, evidence-based practice just means making a more informed decision, doing it in a, in a more structured way being aware of the limitations of the data and evidence you've got. And that's something, I see people do bits of that, but I rarely see people do all of that. I don't know what, what your experience has been.